Hello and welcome to another episode of STEM with Mr N, where every week I'll be performing different demonstrations and explaining the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to look at oxidation. Let's check it out. oxidation? Before I answer that question, we need to understand a bit more about what makes up the world. Everything in the world is made of atoms. Atoms fit together with other atoms to form matter, everything around us. Atoms are very small, but they are made up of even smaller particles. Here is a picture of a simple atom. In the middle, the nucleus, there are protons and neutrons, which are red and green in this image. Round the outside of the nucleus, there are electrons, which are yellow in this image. There are more complex atoms in this one, such as oxygen and iron, which are two elements we will be looking at today. So now we know a bit more about what makes up the world, I can answer that initial question, what is oxidation? Oxidation is when two elements combine in a chemical reaction. One of the elements loses some of its electrons to the other element. The element which has lost some electrons is said to have oxidised. The one which has gained some electrons is said to have reduced. This is what's called a redox reaction. This week, I'm going to demonstrate oxidation as it takes place in our everyday lives. Apples come in different colours on the outside, but cut into them though, and they've got a pale off-white colour on the inside, which looks like it would be quite nice to eat. But what happens to the inside of an apple if it's left exposed to the air? Let's set it up and we'll find out. Over time, the exposed flesh of the apple turns from that nice off-white colour to a very unappealing brown colour. This is because there is an enzyme in the apple which is reacting with the oxygen and it is making oxidation take place. Is there a way we could block out the oxygen from getting to the apple? This time I'm going to set up the experiment, but I'm going to coat one slice of apple in milk and I'm going to coat the other slice of apple in lemon juice and we'll see if we can slow down the oxidation process. The apple slice which has the lemon juice on it does not turn brown as quickly as the apple slice with the milk or the one that we did earlier. This is because the citric acid in the lemon juice is reacting with the oxygen and is stopping the oxygen from reacting with the apple. Not all apples will turn brown as quickly as each other. So at home you could test different apples to see which ones turn brown faster than others. Or you could test different ways to try and block out the oxygen and stop the pieces of apple from turning brown. So we have now observed that oxidation is a destructive process which starts to break down food. But how does it affect other elements? For our next experiment, we are going to see how oxidation affects metal. In this bowl, I have some water. I'm going to add a tablespoon of bleach, a tablespoon of vinegar, and then I'm going to put in a bit of steel wool. I'll put half of it in and leave half of it out so we can see the difference when we check on this one later. Steel is a man-made substance that is mostly made up of iron. After leaving the steel wool in the bowl for about an hour, the acid in the vinegar has eaten away the anti-rust coating on the steel. The oxygen in the bleach has then reacted with the iron in the steel wool and oxidation has taken place. When oxidation takes place with iron or steel, it is called rust. 
you can see the difference between the half of the steel wool that was in the bowl and the half that wasn't. This is what happens to the metal of cards when the protective paint gets chipped or scraped away, as well as affecting other metals which are left exposed outside. Oxidation also takes place on the metal of our coins, which is why they stop being shiny and turn rather dull. In our next experiment, we are going to see if there is a way that we can undo the oxidation process to make our coins nice and shiny again. In one of these bowls, I have some water with some vinegar, and in the other bowl, I have water with some baking powder. I am going to put five dull coins into each bowl, and we'll check in on these in 10 minutes time to see if either of them have come out shinier than when they went in. So I've left my coins now for about 10 minutes. We're going to check back in and see whether being in water with baking powder or water with vinegar has made any difference to how shiny the coins are. You will notice that the coins that came out of the vinegar are shinier than the coins that came out of the water and the baking powder. This is because the acetic acid which is in vinegar has stripped away the oxidised metal from the surface of the coin. That stops the coins looking dull and makes them look nice and shiny again. Our next experiment is one I would suggest that children do not try at home. It involves steel wool, a 9 volt battery and temperatures of up to 700 degrees. As we learned earlier, steel wool is made mostly from iron. When the steel wool is touched by the battery, it completes the electrical circuit. The electrical current running through the steel wool causes the iron inside it to heat up and react with the oxygen in the air. Each spark causes a new piece of iron to heat up and spark, and so the chain reaction continues. Oxidation takes place throughout the burning and at the end, we are left with iron oxide, which is more commonly called rust. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, like and subscribe and share the video with your friends. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions that you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with an answer to your questions. And I might even do a questions video if I get enough questions through. This has been STEM with Mr N looking at oxidation.